Hi, this is John Leslie, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Spotify model in Favro. We'll begin with squads, and then we'll move to squads of squads and tribes. And we'll also take a look at setting up both chapters and guilds in the app. So let's first begin with this squad here. You can see that they have their own collection, Music Player Feature Squad 1. Within this collection, they have both a backlog and a board. Now in Favro Collections, you can have as many backlogs and boards as you choose. Let's look first at the backlog. So here we're looking at the new Sheets view. Uh, this is all new to Favro's All Teams expansion. In this view, you can add whatever columns you choose specific to this backlog. You can also see the hierarchical nature of backlogs in Favro. Here we've broken epics down into user stories. You can have essentially as many levels of hierarchy as you choose. Each user story in this example, we've chosen to display in the Sheets view members assigned to those user stories, a priority tag. We have points, estimations, rolling up to the epic level. We have status indicators, we have value indicators, and we also have what are called relations. Relations indicate everywhere within the app that a particular card exists. This particular user story, user story 1.2, for example, exists both here in this backlog, but also in the done column of the Music Player Feature Squad 1 board, and also in the week 40 column of the Music Player Tribe release train, which we'll get to in a bit when we look at the tribe level collection. So let's add a new user story. When I click on this user story, it brings up the card pop-up. Here you can add whatever fields you choose, including custom fields. Here we have the ability to assign members to this particular user story, tags, put in a timeline if we choose, estimation, feature toggles, which we'll also get to in a bit, priority tags, we'll say this is very high priority, status indicator, we'll say this is not started, value indicator, which would probably be set by the product owner or by the tribe lead. This is also a living document. Something like this. Other users can comment on whatever is written here. creating a true living document and a true living history of all the feedback that's been received, in this case, for this particular user story. You can also add images, attachments, checklists, bullet points, and many other things. When the team is ready to work on any particular user story, committing to a particular user story, say in sprint planning, for example, They'd simply drag and drop that user story from the backlog to the board. As you can see, this card now lives in both places. I'll minimize the backlog to give us some more room on the screen. Eventually, the team will have the bandwidth to take on this particular user story and move it to the doing column. When it's done, it can move to ready for PO review. But before that, I want to show you how we have workflow restrictions built into this particular board, which again can be configured by the team any way they choose. Here, for example, you're not allowed to move from doing all the way to done, skipping PO review. You actually have to move first to ready for PO review. The PO can then pull in when he's ready to take a look at this user story, that particular user story. You can see that it automatically assigned the product owner to the card when it was pulled into the PO review column and also automatically tagged it with a PO review tag for visibility purposes. Now when the PO approves it, he'll move it into the done column. You can see that it automatically flagged that particular user story is done with a done tag. Also built into Favreau's boards are a variety of charts and graphs. You can see we have a burn down chart, cumulative flow chart, control chart. If we look at the burn down chart, you can see it gives us a velocity on every, any given day. It also gives us a velocity prediction out into the future to see if we're going to finish what we've committed to on time or not. 
Okay, so this is the collection for Music Player Feature Squad 1. Now, each squad that makes up this particular tribe would have their very own collection where they could configure their backlogs, their boards, however they choose. Now let's move to the Music Player Tribe collection. As you can see here that this is what's called a dashboard collection, which means it's an aggregation of all of the backlogs at the squad level and all of the boards at the squad level. Now these are the same backlogs and the same boards that exist at the squad level. As teams are moving the cards on these boards, you'll see these cards at the tribe level also moving in real time. Any updates that are made at the squad level will also be reflected here in the overall tribe level. Also in this collection are a music player tribe backlog, a music player tribe release train, and a music player tribe Kanban board. We'll look first at the music player tribe backlog. You can see here we're looking just at the epic level in the tribe. So via relations for each one of these epics, we can see where these epics live because these epics live in multiple places as well. So via these relations, we can see that these epics here one through four are being worked on by squad one. These two are being worked on by squad two. And these two are being worked on by feature squad three. We can also see where each one of these epics lives in the Music Player Tribe Kanban board. Each epic has its own priority. These estimates are rolled up from the squad level based on the user story breakdown. We'll eventually have values for each one of these epics based on maybe an average of the user story values. And you can also see status indicators directly here in the backlog. Now as the tribe lead, if I were to add a new epic, representing a new feature, I could then take that epic and assign it to the team that I think is best suited to work on it. So I'd open up maybe Music Player Feature Squad 1, and I'd simply drag and drop from the tribe backlog to the squad backlog. Then it would be up to the team, most likely, to break this epic down into user stories at the squad level. Now, as that is done, just as you see here for the ones that already exist, those user story estimation points would roll up here to the tribe backlog. You can also see that when I tag this with a priority tag, very high for example, that update is made both here in the tribe backlog and it's also reflected instantaneously here because it's the same exact card, it's the same exact epic in the squad's backlog. Same thing goes for this status indicator. Not started here, not started here as well. Now to help visualize the flow of epics in progress, and their status, we have the Music Player Tribe Kanban board. So for example, this particular epic that we just added, we can move that to selected. Based on priority, these epics will be pulled from stage to stage. We have the same type of workflow rules and restrictions built in here. You're not able to skip the tribe lead review, for example. We have the same type of auto tagging, so it automatically assigns the tribe lead. It automatically tags it with the tribe lead review tag for visibility purposes. Eventually, once the tribe lead approves this epic, it will be pulled into ready for release. That's also tagged and eventually released. And you see the final release tag here. Because this is a Kanban board, we have Kanban functionality also built directly into the board. You could add card limits, also known as whip limits. At each one of your stages. You can also add lanes if you choose to your Kanban board. You also have the ability to see things like time on board and time in column, also known as cycle time and lead time. Also, because this is a Kanban board, 
it makes sense to look at cumulative flow diagrams and control charts. Now let's take a look at the Music Player Tribe's release train board. You can see that we first have the split into lanes representing each squad. And then we have the columns representing each week. Currently, we happen to be on week 42. Each one of these cards represents what was released or ready for release in that particular week for each one of the squads. On any board, you can choose via the show menu exactly what is displayed. For here, for example, I'm going to turn on or show the feature toggle field. So we can see with the feature toggles exactly what features were made visible and which ones were not visible. Now also new in the All Teams expansion is the ability to see any board in three different ways. So here we're looking at the board view. Via this toggle, we'll switch it now to what's called the Sheets view. Here in the Sheets toggle, we're viewing the exact same cards, but in a different way. When we're in Sheets view, we can quickly sort, change the sort order if we choose, save that sort if we'd like, And again, we can add either existing fields and make updates to those fields, or we can create custom fields on the fly that are entirely new and specific to just this board. Here are the different field types. The third toggle to view these same cards in a third way is the roadmap timeline. Here we're seeing those same user story cards on a timeline view. So we can see exactly when these particular user stories were released. Also in this view, you have the ability to drag and drop and also simply extending the timeline like this, which is actually changing the dates on the cards as we do this. We can also look at this particular view in various different timeframes. So we can look at it by week, two weeks, a month, quarters, and a year. We can also determine what is and what is not shown on each one of these cards in this particular view. Okay, let's recap the tribe level. So we've seen that this tribe level collection or any tribe level collection is an aggregate of all the squad boards, real-time squad boards, and the board specific to the tribe, the tribe combine board and the tribe release train board, and also all of the backlogs for both the squad and the tribe. Now let's take a look at how to handle both chapters and guilds in Favro. First, let's look at this example quality assurance QA chapter. Now chapters are discipline specific areas. The chapter lead is actually the direct manager for everybody within that chapter. So this QA chapter, for example, they have their very own backlog of things they want to achieve specific to this discipline. And they have their very own board in order to work on those particular initiatives. The same thing, they can configure this backlog any way they choose and they can configure the board any way they choose. The same holds true for guilds. Now guilds can span not only multiple squads, but also multiple tribes. Here you can see that this Agile Guild, this is a common interest area across multiple squads, across multiple tribes, everyone within the organization who's interested maybe in Agile best practices. And you can see that this guild has its own backlog, and again, its own board, which both can be configured any way this particular guild chooses. So say for example, the tribe wants to have visibility to what both the Agile Guild is doing and the QA chapter is doing. To do that is very simple. Since boards and backlogs can live in multiple collections at the same time in Favreau, we'll navigate back to this tribe collection. We'll click on this plus icon here down at the bottom of backlogs We'll say add from another collection. We'll type in 
quick search here, chapter, we want to see the QA chapter backlog. There you go. This is the same backlog that exists in the QA chapter collection, but it is now also visible in the tribes collection. Same holds true for the boards. Add from another collection, search on chapter, and there you go. And if we want to add the guild, it's done the same way. Guild backlog and the guild board. Now within this tribe level collection, we have not only all the squads, boards, and backlogs, but we could also have all of the guilds and all of the chapters that are related to this particular tribe, all in a single place. So in conclusion, now you can see that thanks to cards being able to be replicated and viewed in multiple places, as well as boards and backlogs being able to be viewed and shared to multiple collections, the infinite flexibility of Favro is perfect for implementing your very own version of the Spotify model. Thanks, and good luck with Favreau.